It's on the way in. Okay, half of you. On the bulletin, it says 30 days of thanksgiving. 30 days of thanksgiving. I think our entire lives should be thanksgiving. Amen? I think every morning when we wake up, we should give thanks to God. I think before we go to bed, we should give thanks to God. I think we should thank God when we turn around and, and He says no to our prayer requests. Amen? I think we should thank God when we, not just when we wake up, but because we got running water in the house. Hello? <laughs> Some of you got heat in your house, so give, thank, give God thanks for that. You know, give thanks, give thanks to God that today is an opportunity that we can start 30 days of thanksgiving. So this is what I want to do. I want to start off like this. I want you to start off with your hands. Open up your hands like this. Open up your hands. Open up your hands. Watch this. Watch this. This is, this, watch this. Watch this. We call that a clap. Okay? You put three of those together, we call that praise. Watch. That's called praise. That's just a simple one. Okay? Now, I wonder how much praise you actually have for God. Go ahead and give him some. Lord, we start today, oh God, with 30 days of thanksgiving. We give you thanks because you are God. You are awesome. You are mighty. God, you sit on the throne. And for that reason alone, we give you thanks. You are creator. You are redeemer, Lord God. You saw us in a pit, Lord God, and you raised us up. You cleaned us up. You filled us with your Holy Ghost, oh God. You are worthy of all this praise, oh God. For you are God and you created us. Oh God, continue to transform us to be more like your son Jesus. We start today with Thanksgiving. We don't wait for the end of the month. We don't wait for November. Our lives are a testimony of how thankful we are because you are God. Thank you, Lord God, for the sacrifice on Calvary, Lord Jesus. Be glorified, be praised in this place where you inhabit the praises of your people. Hallelujah. Mm, is there a hallelujah in the house? Mm, go ahead and have a seat in the presence of God if you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach 30 days of Thanksgiving to myself every day when I get up. I'm not even going to wait for Sunday morning church. Hallelujah. This past weekend is an interesting weekend for many of us. Um, how many of you, I'm not going to say celebrate, because celebrate is the wrong word. But how many of you participate in Halloween in one way or the other? Kids go out and trick or treat. You get candy and give it out to the kids. How many of you do? Come on, be honest. A few of you. Okay, that's not a bad thing. Um, as many of you know, uh, for for years, uh, I used to be criticized because we used to do this thing called uh, light the night. And um, for years, we would light up. Um, we started lighting up the front of our house, and we'd have you know three. 400 kids come by and we preach the gospel. Remember that back in the days, you know? And then we graduated from in front of the house and we started teaching other people on how to do light the night. We taught St. Matthew's how to do it. We taught uh, the folks here at, uh, on Cotton Street how to do it. And then we graduated even further and said, you know, we can make this bigger and greater. And, and we started doing light the night at uh, City Park. And we did that for, for a couple years, a few years. And I think we had like... Uh, uh, 1,000, 1,500 people just come through for, for, on Halloween night. We weren't scared of the dark, amen? How can we be scared of the light, uh, scared, scared of the dark when we are the light? Come on, somebody. You know, and um, so I say we graduated to that. And then as, uh, uh, as the seasons came, we had things like Frankenstorm. Remember that, anybody? Nobody remembers Frankenstorm. Nobody remembers the day it snowed like a couple days before Halloween. Nobody remembers that. I remember it because I was without heat for about an entire week. You know, that was what, two, three years ago? Amen? Um, and then we began to evaluate our stewardship over that, and, and that's when we, we migrated over and started doing the back to school thing instead of the um, of, uh, light the night and felt that that was more productive for us in this neighborhood. Amen? So just a little history there. As far as Halloween, as far as what we've done. So I, I, I'm not opposed to Halloween. 
I believe that it's, it, it can be probably one of the, one of the times um, that you can actually have people come to your door. And instead of you going to their door, they're coming to your door, and you have an opportunity to share the love of Jesus Christ in a real and practical way. Kind of wish this message. I kind of wish this message was last week. I could tell you about it a little bit more, so you can prepare for it. Um, uh, you can hand out tracks. I look. I'm, I'm those people that that will turn around. You come to my door on Halloween. You're getting a track with a piece of candy. But I'm going to make sure you get the best candy. I'm not going to. You know, just, uh, one Jolly Rancher ain't going to do it. I want you to get the big mini size Snicker bars. You know what I'm saying? So that way you can remember, oh, yeah, that's that house over there. They gave me the Snickers and this track. Hello? Not that, oh, that cheap house gave me this track and no candy. Hello? Come on, kids, you know that. You know which houses you don't go to on Halloween. You act like you've been in church the whole time, been sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and never, you're lying. You're lying. So I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about Thanksgiving from from a different perspective, I wanted to take advantage of, of the fact that we just got done with Halloween. I wanted to, to talk about that a little bit, and I, and I kind of labeled this message a trick or treat or truth. And let, let's not be, and, and one of the things that I want to make sure that we, that we understand is that, that, that let's not be tricked or simply satisfied with a treat, but be secure in the truth. I find sometimes that as far as Christianity goes and our own salvation, we get satisfied with, the, with, with a treat. But, but can I remind you what the Bible says? It says, taste and see that God is good. There's, there's, there's something about tasting. Anybody, anybody uh, remember the commercial, the Lay's Potato Chip commercial? Does anybody remember what the, the slogan was a few years ago? You just can't have one. It's the same thing with God. I, I hate to... I hate to compare God to Lay's potato chip. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but follow me along this. I'm not trying to be irreverent, okay, or irrelevant. But, but, I mean, really, you just can't. When you taste, watch this. When you taste and see, what an idea that God is good. You know, there's sometimes my, my, um, uh, my son was at a, at a tournament yesterday, and, um, and afterwards uh, we went out to dinner, and, uh, he's never had a particular cheese dip. He's very particular about, about vegetables. He just doesn't like vegetables. Um, lettuce, tomatoes, don't go on a burger for him. He takes it off. So if you have a cheese dip, he'll eat the cheese dip, but he doesn't like when, 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 when you chop up the onions and, you know, the chili cheese dip, the queso dip. You know what I'm talking about? You ain't got a clue what I'm talking about. Okay, look. I want you all to go get yourself a block of Elvita cheese, a small one, okay? Go get yourself some salsa, okay? The Mexican salsa, you know, the one where you chip the dip chip thing in, right? I want you to combine the two and put it in the microwave. Make sure you watch it so it doesn't blow up in your microwave. Mix it every once in a while, every 30 seconds. Take it out and mix it. Take it out. Go get yourself some tortilla chips and dip that baby up in there. Y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. I ain't never going to your house. <laughs> I don't even know how to do dip right. But my son doesn't like, you know, the chunks of tomatoes and onions and those kinds of things. So at, at dinner last night, I said, son, just, I guarantee if you dip your chip and taste, you're going to find out how good it is. And you're going to like it. So he's at that age right now where he's willing to take his father's word for it, at least now. He, he's tested the waters with his father and his father has been truthful with him. You, go, you, you see where I'm going with this? Your father has been truthful with you. So now my son goes ahead, he dips his chip, and I stop paying attention to him. He dips his chip, tears one up, doesn't say a word, because he's tasting. I look back five minutes later, my whole bowl of chips and cheese is gone. <laughs> God is good all the time. God is good. So as we look at this and understand this idea of tasting God, tasting and knowing that he's good, we, we go through that, and, and, and I wanted to, um, I forgot where I was going with that thread, so I'll just jump in back in my notes. 
Um, so we have this thing, we, we, we did this thing with Halloween, and, and Halloween's over, and then here we are moving into this 30 days of Thanksgiving, and you can call it the pursuit of praise if you want. You can call this theme, this, pra- this series, if it is a series, we'll see how it develops, the pursuit of praise. And I want to talk about Halloween, first of all, from a church perspective. And there's a lot of superstition that rolls around Halloween. And normally now the church is taking a position of, of that it's evil and demonic. Come on, somebody. If you, I mean, you've been there. Amen? You know, where it's demonic and it's evil and it's this, that, and the other. But do you realize that, that at one time and in different places, and there are different, there are different stories that you can follow up on where Halloween originated from? But let me tell you that it started from a church superstition, one of the origins of Halloween, a church superstition, and it was called souling, souling, S-O-U-L-I-N-G. Because as much as, anybody here believe in the power of prayer? Okay, three people. Okay, good. Uh, um, That's all it takes is three. Hello? (laughs) Can I get an amen? Does anybody believe in the power of prayer? Does anybody believe in the power of praying for people? Amen. So, so believe it or not, this superstition began with, if it was an evangelism outreach from the church. The church would go, the kids would go door to door, and it was the poor kids. It was the kids that didn't have anything. And it was almost like an orphanage type of ministry. And they would go door to door, and the poor kids would go around begging. And if they would come to the door, and they would, and they would ask, can we pray for you? remember, we're dealing with kids here, amen? Okay, so the kids would come to the door, and they would, and they would start off by saying, can we pray for you? And the people would come to the door, and they would look at these little kids, and then one of two things would happen. They would say yes. So the kids would pray, and they would pray for the souls of the people in that house, and they would pray for the people in that house. And the people in the house, as a gesture of what the kids were doing, gave the kids a treat they gave them food because they were begging because they were hungry they gave them candy pretty cool huh however if the kids came to the house and they found some snobs or or some people that were just outright that did not want to receive prayer or did not give them anything they did then something mischievous travieso they do something mischievous to the house, like throw eggs, or throw dirt bombs, or uh, pranks, or whatever it is that they could do. So that became, believe it or not, the trick or the treat. Hello? Pretty cool, isn't it? So it was never intended, it was never, some would say, it was never supposed to be a witch's holiday as some celebrate it today. Now you can go and you can read other other origins of Halloween, and they talk about witches, and they talk about all those kinds of things. But from the church perspective, and I'm talking about the, the big church, you know, the big Catholic church, and, and because they were the church, you know, that's where some of those things happened with the kids. In some areas, they talked about um, where, uh, where it wasn't only the praying for the people in the home, but then it, it, it grew into praying uh, against demons and praying against other, other superstitions and and that, that's what it was all about. What is the day after Halloween called? All Saints Day. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? I find it interesting. If you have your, your Bible with you, would you go ahead and turn to Luke, the 10th chapter? Brother Bruce last week turned around and said, um, in uh, the beginning of the message, he said uh, that Josh was beginning to, to step on his message. Um, as, as Josh was doing his, as Josh was taking care of transition today, and he turned to Luke, I was thinking, he better not step on my message. As a matter of fact, uh, the next person that is going to preach in my absence will be Pastor Josh. Come on, somebody. Ya no me puede decir que no. Entiende? Prepárate ahora. Luke chapter 10, can I tell you, I am, I, I, when I'm away from the pulpit and I come back, I, I'm all pumped and excited. 
So I'm trying to like restrain myself, you know, just so you know. By the way, this is also one of my favorite runs of scriptures. Um, because back in Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 10, it talks about life and living life more abundantly. And um, it talks about evangelism and, and those kinds of things. So I, so I want you to understand where we are here in, 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 the, in the 10th chapter of St. Luke. Uh, we're in this place where, where Jesus has sent the disciples out to do evangelism. He's given them power. Um, and they're on, they, they, they come back. And um, starting in verse 16, it says, He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects me, and he who rejects me, uh, and he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. I want to pause there just for a second before we go into the next verse. Because if you notice the, 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 the tone of my voice when I read that, mess, when I read that scripture it is absolutely incorrect. The tone of my voice was completely wrong for this scripture. Because if this was actually happening in real life, and if you think about it, and if you imagine it happening, and, and, if, you, and if, you try to, if you try to make a movie clip out of it, and here comes, Jesus, here comes the 70 who returned, and they were excited. It says they came with joy. Now, now, now joy is, is something that is very difficult to describe. It's more, it's more of a feeling that you feel, and people can actually even see it because of your demonstration. Amen? So here are these, here are these disciples. They're coming in here, and they're, and they're back from, 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 being, from doing evangelism. They're, they're, they're back from praying for people. They're back from seeing people healed. They're back from, people, from demons being gone. They're, back, they're, they're doing the work of God. God. They're excited that they're being used of God. Anybody get excited when they get used of God? Isn't that like a mountaintop? I heard the other day about Lori going to the prison. Wasn't that an exciting thing to be used of God? To deliver the word of God? To see people respond to the word? To see people get encouraged and excited about serving God? It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with him. Hallelujah. I'm going to throw this thing in about five seconds. So you have, to, you have to almost, you have to empathize. You have to put yourself in that situation of what it feels like to be there with them. And all of a sudden, you come back and you say, Lord, let me tell you what just happened. Even the demons, can I tell you that even the demons are subject to your name? Hallelujah. Wouldn't you be excited? I get excited over a praise report. Hello? Then Jesus said to them, now I believe that Jesus was a little bit more um, at peace or a little bit more, more direct. I don't think he was really excited about this. But I think he was, he was in his teaching mode. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. It's, it's the... Let's be excited that the Eagles have a playoff opportunity. Let's be excited that the Giants have an opportunity. Let's be excited that your ki- that, 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 that there are people that are no longer, that are no longer hooked on heroin or crack. 
Let's be excited that we have an opportunity to serve God. Let's be excited about those things that excite us. Let's be excited about the fact that our kids came home with straight A's or straight C's. Glory to God, they made it through it. Let's be excited about those things. Let's live life to the fullest. John chapter 10, verse 10. Let's have life in more abundantly. But let's make sure that we have everything in the right order, that we're more excited about our salvation than anything else. Be more excited about these things. Let's just keep them, let's keep things in perspective. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, do you want a trick or a treat or the truth? Here's the trick. If Satan and his devils can keep you busy. If Satan and all the demons and all the devils can keep you busy and can keep you excited about other things, you will never stay focused on what first things should be first. Are you tracking with me at all? I don't want us to be I started with the jacket because I knew it was going to be cold, but now I'm hot, so off with the jacket. I don't want us to become so complacent and not understand that we have a real enemy. I don't want us to go into this world of, 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 of thinking that we can think our way out of things. I want us to, us to stay rooted in the reality of the world that we live in, the world that we're a part of, and the world where we're going. Hello? If the demons and the devils, and, and you may not know these forces that are at work around you, and you know me, I'm not, a, I'm not a demon chaser. I'm not looking for a devil under a bush. I'll set that baby on fire and run. Hello? I ain't playing that game. But I don't want us to be completely ignorant. Sometimes the church can become so complacent that some people will just turn around and say, there are no demons. That same person that will tell you that there are no demons is the same person that will tell you there is no hell. Watch yourself. Then you have other people that are that, that, that have no personal responsibility and that want to blame demons or devils for the cause of everything. <laughs> the devil made me do it. Shut up. Take some responsibility. It's okay to be wrong and do wrong. Just know that you did. We continue to make the same mistake right from the garden. It was the woman you gave me. It was the devil that tricked me. Let's just take some responsibility. I did it. As a matter of fact, can, can I get a can I get a little monitor? Because I'm I'm in echo mode here, so maybe the model the monitor will go ahead and, and take that out of my ear. No, don't do that. Sorry, guys. Go the other way. We need to take some responsibility. It's okay to turn around and say, listen, I did wrong. As a matter of fact, I did wrong and I enjoyed it. Because most of you, to be honest with you, you don't do wrong and not enjoy it. Let, let, let me just be straightforward with you. You're not going to do wrong if you don't think you're going to enjoy it. Are you tracking with me? So you're not doing, you're not, you're not, the thing that you're thinking about doing wrong or the wrong that you do, you didn't do it because it was going to be bad for you. You did it because it was going to feel good to you. I ain't talking to nobody but myself today. Let me just keep going there. Devils don't need, see, it, it, here's the other piece of it. If, 
once you get past taking responsibility, the other thing that the devil can do is, is that they don't need to keep you from doing something to defeat you. In other words, devils don't need to defeat you, but simply keep you from doing things. I remember, there, I go in, in and out of these seasons, by the way. This isn't a steady thing. It's not like I graduate from certain things. But I know that there are seasons that if the, the devil or devils or demons that come to attack me, they have absolutely, I'm in certain seasons where, you know what, you ain't touching this. I don't care what you're doing. I'm feeling empowered. I got the armor of God on. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been doing all the right things because it's the right thing to do. I feel good about me. I'm in that place where I can say, come on, let's do this. On those times, there's no need to come after me. You don't have to defeat me. But then, you go out, then the devil will go after the things that are important to me. I sometimes feel that some of you go through some attacks, unnecessary attacks, because of me. Because I care about you. So if I see you in a struggle, it'll take me off my game. Because I'm believing with you. I'm praying for you. Then all of a sudden, something happens to you. And I go in that place of, oh God. Because I go in that place with you. Please don't, please don't think that if you're not going through it, I haven't been there through with it, with you. I'll be interceding right there with you going, oh God, why does she have to go through this again? Lord, what is it? Can, can I fast a little bit more <laughs> for, her, for that person's deliverance? Can I believe a little bit harder? It takes me off my game. Because you're important to me. Same thing with my family. My son will get sick. Goes right after him. What, what, what's that that's important? Things that I can't control. Me, I can control. To a degree. Me, I can start thinking my, I, I can start praying my way through. I can start praying scriptures over myself. I can start doing things that are going to get me, that are going to allow me to stand up w underneath whatever it is that I'm going through. Don't get me wrong. There's times when the devil can come right at me. Hey, we, we talked about being hungry and, and being lonely and being this and being that and being vulnerable. There are times where I'm just outright vulnerable. You catch me on a, uh, you catch me on a, on a Monday morning, after being in a hospital with someone all Sunday night and having to go to work, or any of those kinds of things, and I get up and I'm like, <laughs> I got, I, I got to, I got to put a, 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 a block, a, a, a gird in my mouth. Brother Bruce has caught me there a couple times, where I've had to confess to him and say, look, today's not a good day for me, for you and I to talk because there's going to be some things that come out of my mouth that shouldn't be coming out of my mouth. He's caught me in the days where I said, you know what? Shut it all down. And he's interceded. No, no, bro. Hey, Pastor, no, no. A <laughs> little more grace. No, shut it down. <laughs> Hello? My wife has caught me in those places. I said, Baby, I quit. <laughs> you hang this stuff up. Because I'm vulnerable in those times. And a lot of times in those types of situations where I realize it's not a matter of defeat because you can't beat me. It, it, he can't defeat me. I'm more than a conqueror. Ha! My place, I am secure in the place where I'm going. You can't take that. My Bible tells me about those kinds of things. But watch this. He doesn't need to, keep, he doesn't need to defeat me by keeping me or, 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 or confusing me that I'm not secure in those things, by confusing me in my identity with Christ, all the devil has to do, all the demons have to do is keep me from doing what I should be doing in the midst of my drama, in the midst of my trauma. See, just because you're hurting, just because you're tired, just because you're sick, just because you're going through it is not an excuse not to do what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. 
just because you are the the, the current the, 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 the current um, focus of the devil's attention doesn't mean that you don't go out and do what you're supposed to do. Watch this. Devils don't need to defeat you, but keep you from, one, acting. If he can just keep you from acting, if he can just keep you from telling someone about the love of God, he then has a, 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 a feather in his cap. Because he can't get you, but he can keep you from getting to somebody else that needs you. Hello? Devils can keep you from overreacting. I call this the, the DQ syndrome, the drama queen syndrome. Okay? You, you know who I'm talking about. You're too busy fighting demons and devils that you lose focus on Jesus. Casting demons and devils and all these other kinds of things ain't got nothing to do with the current situation. DQs. Another demon. If you go ahead and stop sinning, you ain't got to worry about the demon because you're the one letting them in. Whoa. That's too much for a Sunday morning. We, we've, we've actually have refused to go pray at certain people's homes because they refuse to repent. I can't come in and pray with you in your home and with you over the stuff that you're actually allowing and giving permission to the devil to come do. You and me are not good. You can't call the pastor or the pastors or the elders to come and pray at your house because there's a demonic influence, it's possible, in your home and then go call a witch doctor. You can't turn around and burn candles to Mary after I've been in there and I've anointed you with oil. Hello? You can't do that. Come up here and get anointed. Pray for you. Oh, Pastor, don't, uh, I'm caught up in this mess. I can't stop doing this mess. Okay, I'm going to pray for deliverance. power of crack be released in your life set you free in the name of Jesus and you leave this place and you go right around the corner and go ahead and get yourself another pipe you've left the pipe at the altar and you go around and get yourself another one what's wrong with that you've allowed it you've given permission to it you haven't walked in your deliverance or in your freedom hello I'm just talking too real I I can't, I can't take time off then, because... Overreacting. Here's the other one. Blaming everyone else but the source. Sometimes you just got to own it. <laughs> this is my problem. By the way, um, I, I just want to be real honest with you, if I can. Please, please don't throw eggs at me. I know it's after Halloween and all, and you may want to, but still, don't do it. Um, I believe in 12 steps. So long as the final step uh, of that staircase is Jesus, I'm okay with it. I believe in the 12-step programs. I believe in programs that get you, get you along, along the way. Um, I prefer to, I, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm 47 years old. Um, I like one step. See, look, one step. Okay? Uh, one step. I, I like this. I don't like to have to walk up 12 steps to get to where I'm going. I like to take the elevator now. Hello? I'm just saying, if you, if you need the exercise and you want to go through the 12 steps, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it. I'm not speaking against it. I'm just saying, go for it. Amen? But get there. Here's the other thing. In agreement with 12 steps and whatever, and whatever recovery program that you need and whatever psychosis or problem or, or demonic influence, whatever it is that you want to call it that you're going through, I am for it as long as you find your deliverance in it. Because in the bottom line for me, the bottom line of deliverance is going to be Jesus anyway. It just took you longer. It just took you a longer way to get to it. Do you understand that? Okay. So, so, so don't, don't, don't write to the district superintendent and tell them that. Don't do that. Just understand where I'm coming from. I also don't believe that you are an addict for life.
I'm against that. That is a plot from the work of hell itself. That once you are an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. That's a lie. That's a lie to keep a shackle on your foot, to keep you from walking in the freedom that God has given you. I believe that there comes a season where you have to leave that 12-step program and walk in the freedom that God has given you because the Son has set y'all, come on, somebody. He set you free. Hello? There comes a, don't get me, don't misunderstand me. I do believe in recovery. I do believe in a process. I do believe it takes time. Brother Bruce knows that I don't, that nine months for me at the men's home ain't enough. If I could lock you up in there for two years, that would might begin to make a, 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 a difference. Hello? Paul had, Paul had to go under discipleship for three years before he was released into his own apostolic ministry. You ain't tracking with me. Read your Bible. Hello? It took Moses 40 years in the desert and then 40 years to accomplish his mission. Even Jesus... After he was grown and grew up in Torah and grew up under the culture of being a rabbi, still had only three years of ministry himself. Tell me nine months. Nine months ain't nothing. Most of you can do nine months in jail on on your head. Hello? Okay, enough of the angry pastor. Blaming everyone else but the source. John 10.10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and that that they may have it more abundantly. 1 Peter 5.8 says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Learn to discern. What the source is, so that you can better be equipped to handle the problem. Hello? If you're constantly blaming the wrong thing, or the wrong area, or the wrong person, you will never find freedom. I think, the, and for some, I don't know for, for, for everybody, I'm not, a, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist, I'm a pastor. I can minister the word to you. I can tell you about some of my philosophies and my understandings. I realized that for me, when I, when I finally came to the point of saying, I enjoyed, past tense, this sin. And now I can realize that this enjoyment is out of the will of God. Now I can act against it. Because I'm no longer doing it because it don't feel good. (laughs) Because the truth is, it does feel good. Hello? But I no longer do it because of my love for Christ. It's higher than my love for fill in the blank. Anybody still with me? Let me put a bow on it for you then. No longer can we go... No longer can we continue being complacent about the supernatural. We need to believe in it and know that we have the authority that we have in that realm. We have to understand our authority in that realm. I say that very cautiously because some of us want to take more authority than what you have. And others don't take enough authority. Hello? Here's your treat, 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 through 5. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves, teachers, and they will turn their ears from away, away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. These are the people that, that, that I caution because, because they leave a church, they leave a ministry because they're not getting the, the opportunity 
to do whatever it is that they want to do. They forget to fall under authority and lose the very authority that God wants to give them while they sit under it. We have to be careful with this. Because the time has come. Oh, they don't, they don't, they don't talk about they don't talk about money enough, or they talk about money too much. They don't talk about, they don't talk about, they don't preach on healing enough, or they preach on healing too much. Uh, they don't talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit enough. Uh, uh, maybe they talk about it too much. Uh, uh, they emph- Go through it. Do the work of the evangelist. Continue to bring people to Christ. A lot of times you will go through seasons. I, and listen, I, I've said this to to uh, the Delaney's as we're getting ready to, uh, to do this awesome discipleship thing, is that a lot of times the information that you're going to receive in Bible studies may be information that you already know, but it's information that you need to once again receive, once again digest, so that you can give it away. Many of you have received, listen, many of you have received good, sound, doctrinal teaching about salvation if you've been with me for the past three years or or a few years you have received good and i'm not this isn't me doing this to myself okay you have received in this church you have received solid discipleship teaching about how to how to trust god how to go after god how to believe the how to believe god how to know who you are in christ you've received those things now that you've received it you may need to receive it again so that you can teach it Paul says, you should all be teachers by now, but you're carnal. I can't tell you about these other things because you're still worried about your ingrown toenail. Hello? You're worried about, you're still worried about sin and baptisms and these elementary things when by now you should be teaching them. I should at least have five amens in here. I can count them. The time will come where our desires will dictate what we want to hear. The reason why our desires dictate what we want to hear is because it's what makes us feel good. Chocolate, anybody? Anybody love chocolate? Anybody love chocolate? What would happen to your life if all you did was have chocolate three times a day, every day, what would happen? Is there anything that you can think of that you can, in, in the food categories, that you could think of for yourself that you would be happy with having three times a day as your daily meal and nothing else? Anything. Chicken, Brother Bruce says. I think Sean says chicken too. Okay. What's that? Bread and butter. So just imagine your life on chicken alone or bread and butter. As a matter of fact, I'll throw, I'll, I'll throw this at you. You can have chicken and bread and butter. That's it. Now, forgive me as I say this to you. You're the ones that need to be careful. Because you're not getting a balanced meal. You're the ones that have to be careful with, with diabetes when all you're eating is bread. And I know that Brother Bruce ain't talking about grilled chicken. Hello? You got to worry about your cholesterol. Hello? Because you, you, may, you, you may almost get me with just grilled chicken, but you got to throw some greens in there somehow. Our desires dictate what we want to hear. Our desires. Not the desires of our God. Your will be done. Not mine. Hello? Two. Sound doctrine challenges us too much. The time will come when we are challenged by sound doctrine. The time will come when, when hearing about sin and repentance and forgiveness is too much for us. Or, and I say it's too much, you say it's not enough. The time will come 
when all we want is give me feel good for me. Give me feel good for me. I just, br- Pastor, why can't we just come to church and feel encouraged? Because at this moment, what you need is a foot up your behind. Come on Wednesday, I'll encourage you. Come Tuesday. Come Wednesday, they'll encourage you in Spanish. Come Tuesday, we'll encourage you in English. Hello? All I want is tell me about all the right things I'm doing. Don't we all like to hear about the right things we're doing? Ain't nobody want to hear about the bad things you're doing. Listen, I've thought about this in, 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 on some occasion. I wonder, I wonder, you know, Pastor Josh said, uh, uh, why'd you come to church today? Why are you here today? Did you come here today to hear about the good things that you're doing? Is that really why you came? Really? Real, t- tell me. I mean, if you came to hear about all the wonderful things that you're doing, let me tell you, the most wonderful thing that you did today was come to church. Congratulations. Is that really why you came? Or did you come because you know that there's something terribly wrong with this world? Did you come because you need to hear how it is that you can better serve God. You didn't come here just for feel good. I'm going to give you feel good. Because I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be empowered. I want you to understand your authority. I want you to go up there and give the devil a black eye. But before you do, I want you to be prepared. I want you to be strengthened. I want you to go ahead and hear about some of the things you need to let go so that you can go ahead and enter into this combat zone. Amen? time's going to come where where don't talk to me about I need to change or how to change. When you get to that point in your life, when you turn around and you have the intestinal fortitude to tell me that you no longer need any change, that's the point in time where you are most in trouble. I fear for anyone to include myself for that day that I would look in the mirror and say, I got this. I don't need no more. That's the day that I've been deceived. That's the day that you've been deceived. The time has already come where we wanted seven steps to financial sex, three steps to victory, six ways to receive what I deserve, nine things to fix my teenager. Me, 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 me. All about me, my circle, my life, my living. If you get me focused on me, I don't have to think about you or your God. That's why sometimes some of these shows that we watch are all about making me feel good. When you start feeling too good, you have been lullabied to sleep. Hello? And I, listen, I'm not doom and, you know, gloom and doom either. Okay? There's, there's something sweet about a victory. After you've had a defeat. Anybody, anybody, if any, any of you have ever had a real victory, it's only come, the, the sweetness of that victory has only been after you've, you've had your, after you've had a serious defeat. Are you tracking with me? Let's, let's be done with this. The truth. 2 Corinthians 2.11. In order that Satan, the Bible says, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. The Amplified version, version says it like this. To keep Satan from getting the advantage over us, we are not ignorant of his wiles and or his intentions. So where does evil come from? What does James say? But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. James 1.14. Peter says it like this, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, 1 Peter 1.14. Paul tells Timothy, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So where does evil come from? Us. I didn't want to hear that one, did you? It says, out of your own evil desires. Second place where evil comes from, 
Satan, the evil one, and those that belong to him. We've already spoken about there's a real devil. There's a real devil. There's a real adversary. There is a real enemy. I, I want to play a quick game. Some of you have played this game, and then I'm going to close for the second time. Um, I'm gonna. I, I've played this game before in church. Many of you are very aware of it. If, if you know the if you know the punchline, don't blow it. Okay. Um, but we're gonna play a. a uh, I say a word, and you give me the direct opposite. Okay. For example, if I say wet, you say. If I say dry. If I say black. If I say green. I ain't got no clue, neither do I. I just thought I'd throw that one in there. If I say Jesus, really? Say again? There is no opposite of Jesus. There is no direct opposite. Satan is not an equal to Jesus. Jesus, as we see through scriptures and define through scriptures, was not only there in creation, but everything was created for him, Colossians 1. So to turn around and even think that we have to compare Satan with Jesus is another lie from the pit of hell. There is only one God. There is only one creator. There's only one. And his name is Jesus. Can I get an amen? When you begin to understand where we are with that and who Jesus is in perspective to who Satan is, to, to what all creation is, then you can begin to, to, to realize that, look, I ain't got to, anybody, and if you have, you don't have to tell me, but maybe you did. Anybody see that, that, that new show, Constantine? Good, don't. Um, um, how about The Exorcist? The Exorcist? Anybody remember The Exorcist? Uh, how about The Exorcist of... Uh, that the new one, um, some girl that, whatever, uh, exorcism movies. Um, uh, what are some of the? There's a whole bunch of movies out there about exorcism now. There's a whole bunch of shows out there about exorcisms. Okay, even the church now, either the current church, the, the 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 evangelical church, plays around with exorcism as well. Okay, now do I believe in exorcism? You bet you're behind I do. You bet you're behind I do. Why? Because it's in my Bible. You follow what I'm, where I'm going with this? But I am not, if I follow Scripture and see the pattern in Scripture on how demons are dealt with, then that is the pattern that I should follow. I don't need to follow the practices and the traditions that men have made. If I have authority then I have authority. Josh, stand up. Please sit down. Y'all laughing. That's authority. Not because I hoard it over him. Not because I'm going to beat him down because if he doesn't listen to me. But because I have authority. In his life. Thank you for being thank you for being obedient. I appreciate that. Okay? Now, someone else in here, I could have turned around and said, stand up. And you would look at me like, You crazy. Who are you? Watch this. Jesus I know, but you. Jesus I know and Paul I've heard of, but you? There's a scripture in there, there's a story in there about about uh, the sons of uh, I forget what their names were, we're trying to cast out what's that? Yeah, they, they were trying to cast out demons. And the demons turned around and said, Jesus I know, Paul I've heard of, but you? You have no authority. You, you're tracking where I'm going with this. Okay? So at the same time, I am not going to sit there and, and, and play tug of war with a demon like if he was my new puppy. Hello? I'm not going to sit there and be like, for hours on end, 
Oh, Hoshakata. No. By the authority given to me, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave this person. Oh, you don't want to go? Okay. <laughs> Jesus, you got this one, right? I'm not going to sit there and play with you. Hello? I have, I mean, look, I've been in, I've been in environments and I've been in situations where there have been demons. And by the way, if you are battling demons, that doesn't mean that you're possessed. You can be oppressed but not possessed, not if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you following what I'm saying? You may have demonic issues because you're being oppressed by demons, but there's deliverance for that. But you've got to be ready to receive that deliverance. We've got an entire prayer team that will be willing to pray deliverance over you. But if you can let that demon back into your life again and go ahead and watch, and, and, and watch uh, uh, I don't know, Ali McBeal again with it. Then, then, then. Hello? Don't, don't, don't invite the demon over for, uh, thank God it's Thursday, uh, ABC, whatever they got going on. I, 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 think, I don't know, maybe I'm talking over some, too many people's heads, so I'm going to leave that one alone and move forward. I just want us to understand is that devils cannot create, but they can instigate. Devils can't create, they can instigate. Devils can't make you sin, but they can make sin look good. Devils can't make you depressed, but they can help you stay there. Hello? Devils can't kill, but they can beat you down real good. Are you striking with me? Here's your challenge. In the midst of everything you are, there's a, uh, there was a statement that was made in a song one time, and I've never been able to, uh, and if you have, then please let me know so that I know that I have a scripture basis to go on to, but I've never been able to find a scripture to go with it, but it's one that I do believe. And it says that praise confuses Satan. Praise confuses Satan and the devils. It's very confusing for Satan to understand how you can praise in the middle of your stuff. That the more he brings at you, the more you're willing to praise God for it. That's confusing. As a matter of fact, it confuses not only the enemy, but it confuses people around you. How can you praise God in the middle of your mom dying? How can you praise God while your son is in jail? Tell me, how can you do that? How can you praise God after you've lost your husband? How can you praise God in the middle of, in the middle of being caught up in a recovery home and the pastor is giving you another, another 60 days that you've got to stay there because of some foolishness that you did? How can you praise God when your house is going under foreclosure? How can you praise God when you ain't got a clue how you're going to pay your student, your student loan? How are you going to praise God when there's no heat in your house? Tell me how you can praise in the middle of your drama and in the middle of your trauma. It don't make any sense other than to know that God got it under control. Praise. Let me tell you why praise is so confusing towards other people in the enemy. Praise focuses on God. Praise removes the focus from us. Praise focuses on the truth of who God has revealed himself to be. Praise sets us free both from ourselves and from devils. You want to be set free? You got a problem with a devil? Go ahead and start praising. It will set you free. When Paul was in jail, praise set him free. Would you please stand with me? I would like to open up the altars at this time if you need prayer for whatever or anything else in your life. I ask you just to go ahead and come forward. Our pray partners will be here to receive you, pray with you, pray for you, believe God for you, whatever your situation is. Please understand that as, as you've heard this message, this wasn't a message to keep you from coming to the altars if you're struggling. This, me this message is to bring you to the altars if you're struggling. Why? Regardless of where you are, regardless of what your situation is, I believe that God is bigger and greater than that. And you need a place to come to and be able to, to, to work that through. And I believe that's what these altars are for. Would you close your eyes with me? 
If you're here today and you need, and you would like me to keep you in prayer this week over whatever it is that you're going through, you know that your, your battle is real. Whatever it may be, just go ahead and slip a hand up and I want to keep you in prayer this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not really concerned what the source of it is or what the core of it is. I just want to keep you in prayer this week. Hallelujah. I look around today and I feel, and I believe I know everyone that is here, that everyone here does know Jesus Christ. If you know you're far from God, then I ask, please, come to the altars. You don't need a prayer partner to rededicate your life to God. You just come and, and allow God to just minister to you and, and allow for yourself to just, just be drawn closer. You lift your hands up and just receive. As I pray the benediction over you, please receive this and think about what you're receiving. Let it enter deep into your heart to realize that God is so good that he does want to bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Father, I thank you for your people today and I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. I come against any demon or demonic influence in their lives, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. There shall be no hindrances that will keep your people from worshiping you and drawing close to you. Lord God, be a mighty force in their lives so they can see you at work. At work. Lord God, let them taste and see that you're good, that you're so good, that you're awesomely good, that your love does endure forever. Lord, I pray for those that lifted their hands up that need just an extra touch. Even now, Lord God, I pray that you would send your guardian angels to their lives right now, Lord God. Let them stand at attention beside them and be aware of what is happening around them. We confess that we do not fight against flesh or blood, Lord God. That fight is within us and we come against that as well that our own evil desires would be set to the side and realize that we love you more than our desires. But Lord, that there is a real battle, a real supernatural battle that is happening. So even now, Lord God, have your way in the heavenly realms. Have your way on earth. We submit this to you. And now I pray, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of our Messiah, Jesus, and God's people said, if you received anything from the Lord today, would you give him praise, please? Hallelujah, Lord God. You are